the snares of Satan in the workplace. What did he say? Snares of Satan. Where? In the workplace, the place of employment. My brothers and sisters, the devil is here and he means business. The Bible says he was cast out of heaven. It's like he was cast into the workplace. One of these major bases where he operates from is the workplace. Many people will go straight into hell from the workplace. <laughs> Are you with me? The snares of the devil in the workplace, a snare is simply a trap. And uh, it's a temptation to catch you. Scientists, social scientists, are saying statements like this or asking questions. Is the modern day workplace a threat to morality and marriage? I don't know how you would answer the scientist. Your workplace, is it now a threat to morality and to marriages? Do you know where you are working? Number two, social scientists have concluded that the workplace in many countries is now a hazard to marriages. But one thing that we know is we are going to heaven. But the devil says, who is going? Among you, Moses, tell me who is going to Canaan. Yes, God says go, but who is going? He's asking the same question to all of us uh, in regard to our workplaces. The workplace is now littered with countless landmines of moral temptations, booby traps of moral temptations. Men have to choose between their jobs and their marriages. I'm not, I'm not the one saying these words. These are social, social scientists who are busy studying uh, the, the temptations in the workplace as far as they relate uh, to the purity of marriage and morality. Here is a case study. Kids, do we have kids here tonight? Can I, can I see your hands, kids? Our kids are my friends. I want a clever kid who is going to quickly respond to this question. Kid, are you there? Okay. <laughs> How do you feel? When your dad is always coming late home from his workplace, finds you asleep, before you wake up to go to school, he's gone. How do you feel? A clever little child will answer this question. Where is that clever one? How do you feel? I'm trying to involve the kids. Where? Stand up, girl. Okay. And I'm trying to give her the man. I want you to consider the feelings and emotions of children as far as our workplaces are concerned. I feel sad because I never get to see my father and I don't get the attention I want. I don't want to say whose child is this one? <laughs> That's a clever child, eh? Excellent answer. I wish our ushers would give a gift. Ushers, see that you give that child. She is speaking on behalf of all the kids. They get affected when daddy delays, he doesn't come, or he comes home late, tired, wakes up early, he goes. The kids are watching you, and they are observing you, and uh, you are not bonding with them. I'm going to talk about the issue of bonding and attachment. You are attaching someone. Okay, thank you, uh, dear child. You get your gift from the ashes. Here is a case study. From many a counseling session that I have uh, uh, conducted and also read from other counselors, broken homes, sad stories that has happened in the workplace, this one touched me. Real story. We were sitting together in the boardroom at a sales meeting. Did you hear that? His leg brushed by mine. I felt a spark at the point of contact. 
I was disappointed when he removed his leg. He read this in my face. Next, he pushed his chair closer to me in a board meeting. It worked. Pushed his chair, I mean his chair, close to me and put his hand on my thigh. I did not resist it. But the meeting was when the chairman was chairing in a sales meeting in a board or staff meeting in the workplace. That was it. I fell into an immorality bottomless pit and it cost my marriage. I regret for not closing the door against temptation. I was not a closed door, cried Elizabeth. Is the modern day workplace a hazard to marriages and morality? I'll ask a few comments. What was wrong? What went wrong in this meeting? What, what was this lady supposed to have done? What do you think of this case? A few hands before we proceed. <coughs> You don't know what she should have done. <laughs> <laughs> speak up, friend. She entertained the feeling. Sorry, speak up. She entertained what was going on. She entertained or tolerated. His leg brushed against mine. And I felt a spark <coughs> in the point of contact. What we should have done. Thank you for that response. What was wrong in this situation? Please, please, let's, it's, oh, it's males responding, ladies, where are you? It was Elizabeth here, okay? So Elizabeth did not. She liked it. She encouraged it. How could she have fled? It's a board meeting here. <laughs> Chairs around the table. All eyes looking at the chairman, but what's happening beneath the table? <laughs> she could have moved her chair away, changed the position. Did you hear that? Yes. Thank you. The last hand, please. A lady, at least. A lady, at least. Three males have responded so far. Yes, sister, Laura. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let, let's. Uh, I wish. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would have spoken out. <laughs> And give them a warning one more time, but everybody's there. You would have said it in the heading of all. <laughs> How many say amen to that? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Friends, I believe we are on the borders of the heavenly kingdom. And I believe Jesus is coming soon. The things I'm talking about are real and are happening, and they are chronicled and they are researched. We all go to work. Keep your relationship with Jesus at your workplace. If you go into this type of behavior after you have such things, they are sending a message to the kingdom of heaven that you don't want to be with Christ. The devil has come into the workplace. It cost a, a marriage. And once it, uh, the marriage has been cost, the funny fellow also dumps you. And he goes and you remain alone recreating throughout your life, like Elizabeth. Amen. Amen. So be sober and be vigilant, for Satan has come down, even to the workplaces, to seek whom he may devour. To, he seeks to devour marriages and relationships. Are you with me? <coughs> Here's a question that I want you to answer me. Sometimes Jesus told by asking questions first. He told by asking questions. What challenges are faced by a lady 
who works in a department where she's the only female among males. This is a reality. Are there any temptations that she she's likely to face or everything is okay? How can she remain <laughs> a pure that is ready for the kingdom of heaven? The only lady among men in that department. You may not need to answer me, maybe, but think about it. The opposite is true as well. The only men among ladies in this department. The devil is arranging situations to make sure that somebody does not go to heaven. You are going for a salary then. That's your aim. But the devil is an aim on you. He surrounds you in the temptations. The next question I want to ask you, what temptations are faced by a secretary who goes on a business trip with a boss to meet other professionals somewhere? Are there any temptations or everything is okay? Between this seminar, it will church back home called New Lens. Hey, with a good time. Am I speaking, said sister? The company appoints you and your boss to go and represent your company in some regional meeting or somewhere. Are there any temptations that are likely to be faced? Or well, everything is okay? When the Bible says, be sober and be vigilant. God means what he says. Are you with me? Okay. What the same applies, what happens? Okay, no, no, maybe not worry about that. I came across some, you know, I do research a lot. Uh, some companies and businesses around the world, and I realize what sociologists are noting, the workplace is becoming a hazard. The morality and marriages. Even secular people are noting it. Amen. How much more Adventists, children of the kingdom, if we pretend to be blind and the world becomes wiser than us, it's not right. We should even be more so and more careful. Amen. One Christian company or one Christian, Christian business organization came up with these codes of conduct for their employees. This, I'm quoting a company in organization because I know St. John is full of entrepreneurs, business people, professionals, amen, young professionals who work in some office, somewhere in a department. Don't feel offended, but feel counseled, amen. amen. Forewarned is for this Christian organization says code of conduct at the workplace. Okay. Many Christian companies have codes of conduct that are safe, a safeguard against the temptations of emotional or physical affairs with co-workers. Here is an extract of such codes. Number one, people of the opposite sex should not ride in a car together without a third party present. It's not the word of God. I'm quoting a case study from a Christian company business organization. Don't argue with me, it's not my company. <laughs> okay? Without a third party, present. Are you comfortable to ride with the opposite sex all day long? Find these business organizations came up with these things. I'm going to give the view of God's way in the end. Case studies are very good because there are practical things happening on earth. People of the opposite sex should not ride in a car together with, okay, I wrote that, I read that. Number two, don't make a personal, non-work related phone call to a co-worker of the opposite sex. <laughs> don't make a personal, non-work related call to a fellow worker of the opposite I just called to say hi. <laughs> what's, God, what's God going to do with your work? I 
thank God for this company. I don't know where they are from. I just came across this information. These are signs that there is an attachment development. I'm going to get deeper. Non-work-related phone calls to a co-worker of the opposite sex. Work ends at 5 o'clock. You're phoning at 7 p.m. What, what are you looking for? Think of Elizabeth. Don't have lunch with the same person of the opposite sex every day. <laughs> you know this? I thank God for this Christian company. I said God is some good fearing business owners who care about the welfare of their workers and want them ushered in the kingdom of heaven. Lunch every day with the same woman. With the same man. The angels are watching you as you do that. And Jesus will say, who died on the cross. Look at him. Talk about your spouse in positive terms. Make it clear to all your workers that you are a married person. And you intend to stay that way. I know some people who don't make it known that they are married in the workplace. They are very silly there. <laughs> the company goes on to say another code of conduct. Be careful not to make any lingering eye contacts. These are known as bedroom eyes. No bedroom eyes at work. <laughs> non verbal communication. We can read your eyes, the message in your eyes. It doesn't make sense. Non verbal. A Christian, when they look, they have a Christian look. <laughs> a holy look. Are you with me? But there's a certain look you can tell what somebody wants. Just by the eyes. Do not make a lingering eye contact at work. Eyes send lots of messages. If somebody is angry, look at their eyes, how they behave. Are you with me? Scientists are saying no bedroom eyes at work. The devil will get you. Many have fallen. There are many fallen heroes because of the bedroom eyes at work. Avoid bedroom jokes in the bedroom language at your workplace. Careless statements, suggestive words, tempting words. Is somebody listening? At the workplace. The only appropriate, I like this uh, uh, code of conduct by this business organization, the only appropriate touch between business associates. Come up, my sister. Yes. The only appropriate touch between business associates of the opposite sex is a headship. <laughs> <laughs> Contact between business associates. Now these are organizations out there. My dear sister spoke about too much a hug and a squeeze in the house of God. Have you seen these things happening? That's why Jesus says the children of this world are wiser than God's children. They are becoming wise, but God's people. Pastor, just a hug, Pastor. <laughs> Elder, a hug. Organizations are forbidding it out there. Carelessness now is now moving into the house of God. Be very careful. The devil is not a fool. A person does not fall in one day. It's a gradual process. You are on the path to fall. If you love your Jesus, depart from him. Business trouble. 
snares. If your job requires you traveling with another employee of the opposite sex, do not get adjoining hotel rooms. If possible, request a room on a different floor. <laughs> this organization system does it make sense. Your boss is here and you have the next room. <laughs> in your hotel room. Meet in the coffee shop or appropriate place. Secretary, just rush over here, I need something from you. You call them to your hotel room. Many have fallen. Fallen heroes. <laughs> fallen elders. Fallen pastors. Fallen church board members. It was an innocent call to the room and they went and suspected. Then they don't know what happened. <laughs> Call your spouse every night at a designated time and give him or her full permission to call you on your cell phone at any time. They've gone on business travel any time the wife can call. Any time. Those men will switch off their phones and say, don't disturb when be careful. Are you with me? The Bible says do not turn on romantic TV channels in your hotel room. Two weeks away on business, you're just there in your hotel room. Is it Are you with me? You are tempting yourself. The Bible says see no evil, hear no evil, Touch no evil. But for the kids, I would have gone even deeper. Let me leave it there. So scientists are affirming the workplace has become a dangerous place. Whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or, or not. The so by be vigilant. Revelation 12, verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you. Heavy great growth, because he knows that he is but a short time. And he has not spared the workplace either. He knows time, but many Adventists don't know time. There are so many snares in the workplace. When I was having this seminar at Newland Church, one elder said, it's a big guy, and these workplaces, you know, past what they do. Some of these big guys at work, they then call a secretary and say, look, I have information that I need urgently. When it's time to go home, they just want to separate you. His others are going. And what you do, you yield unsuspectingly. Make it known that you have made it. And it's important that you remain. Are you with me? Some will offer prom promotion on certain conditions. You get the company car on certain conditions. You know the conditions? I must have a carpet interview with you. <laughs> with me? You don't know these terms. You know a carpet interview? Oh, some young lady said, no, you know. You cannot suspect, you cannot care. Okay? Temptations in the workplace. The devil has come from heaven knowing his time is short and he has not spared the workplace either. Warning signs. Examine yourself and check on these warning signs. In the workplace today, even in the house of God, there are people who have uh, two wives or three. My home wife and my work wife. Am I speaking sense? Yeah. My home wife. And my work My home husband and my work husband. These things are just to be named among remnant people. But they are happening. How many will go to hell? 
and how many go to heaven? There is what we call emotional infidelity. And the physical infidelity. Emotional infidelity is getting emotionally attached to that person at your workplace. And so some daddies go to the bedroom physically present with the wife but emotionally not there. Pastor, he is here but emotionally is not here. Whatever he does is just a ritual. <laughs> you didn't understand that? <laughs> the marriage act is now a ritual, but honestly, the man is not here. It's now a ritual. Where are you attached? My wife wife and my <coughs> home wife. Satan is separating many from the kingdom of heaven. These are the red flags you should watch for. Number one, when you start spending a lot of emotional energy on the person at your workplace, for example, daydreaming, fantasizing about that person, these are the steps towards the sure fall. Your emotions are reserved for your spouse. The moment they are now attached to work, Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, hear the word. By the way, I said I'm not charismatic. Jesus said, go and teach. Explain. Appealing to reason, mm -hmm. not to emotion. Mm -hmm. I have no spirit to offer from my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the stadium and get spirit that dwell in prophets' pro pockets. When you end up sharing stuff that you don't even share with your husband or wife, uh, hopes and dreams at your workplace, mm -hmm. you are not sure where you come. Things that you are supposed to share with your wife and happy, you are free to share with workmates of the opposite sex. <laughs> are you there? Warning signs. You are physically in your bedroom with your spouse, but emotionally absent. I talked about this, everything becomes a ritual. Oh, pastor, he does it dutifully, you know. <laughs> he does it dutifully. This is what we call emotional cheating. You are emotionally cheating on your spouse. And God classifies that as a doubt. Mm -hmm. So if I say we need a family revival, family renewal, it is renewing that I should even reform in my emotional attachments. Mm -hmm. Starting at my work place. By the way, you spend eight hours at work. How many hours do you spend with your spouse? So the chances of bonding at work are greater. Somebody say, don't say that man, you say, don't go to work. I never said that. <laughs> I only said, be sober and be vigilant. For the devil is seeking for somebody to devour. <laughs> when you start dressing up sure. for that person at work, not for your husband. Oh, my boss. <laughs> you know, by the mirror, you're making up yourself for your. You're not speaking to me. You're now dressing up for who? Yes. You're supposed to be dressing up for who? Yes. When you start dressing up for that person at work, angels are watching. And Jesus, too. And the Father, and they said, Do you think she is fit to live among holy beings? This one. Whatever you do, do to the glory of God. Some are seeking to please a boss at work. Dress up. Do your hair this way, that way, to please the boss. I thought you did it for your husband. Psychologists know that there is attachment forming somewhere. And it is sin. The Bible says teach, rebuke, correct, instruct that the man of God, the woman of God may be made righteous. Blessed is the person who listens to these words 
with a grief word. You'd feel guilty if your partner saw you together with that person. The conscience reports what you're doing is not right. And you'd feel bad if your hubby or your wife saw you doing what you do with that person at work. If you start keeping secret the amount of time you are spending with that person, including emailing, calling, texting, WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, with that person, oh, sorry, the devil now says, she is surely ours. He is surely ours. At Highlands Church, I preached this sermon, first of all, entitled Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter. End the judgment. Whatever you tweet, you shall account. <laughs> Whatever you WhatsApp, you will account. For behold, it is written before me. We talked about that. Are you with me? Don't be careless on WhatsApp, Twitter, and Facebook. Tweet the gospel. WhatsApp the gospel. Anything beyond that, be very careful. The evidence why somebody will not be in heaven is in their cell phone. <laughs> That's where the incriminating data is. In that little thing you are carrying there. Why should their husband go and answer his cell phone in the toilet? <laughs> and spend an hour or 45 minutes there. Why? Why does a woman not want a cell phone to be touched by the husband? If you are doing such things, then let me warn you in Jesus' name. You are not an honest Christian. That does not create trust in your home. You are busy destroying your own marriage. The Bible says Adam and Eve, in the beginning, both of them were naked. Physically naked and naked communication. Open community. No one was suspicious of anybody. Now you don't want it yourself. In that Facebook, I don't know whose face is there. <laughs> Before people commit physical adultery, they commit emotional adultery. Falling is gradual, in steps. And then finally the devil is sure of his victim. Like Elizabeth. I felt a spark emotional body, and then the marriage collapsed. She was dumped in the deceiver for Suki. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, separated by God to show holy works. When you go to your workplace, go as a holy priest or holy priestess. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see heart is associated with emotion. So a pure heart is not bonded to somebody's work. It's bonded to Christ. Bonded to its husband or spouse. Blessed are those people who have such a heart. Pure heart, pure emotions. They shall see God. I'll give you counsels from the spirit of prophecy if you think these are my own words. Testimonies of the spirit of prophecy. Adventist to home page 334. Our sisters, Sister Ellen White, she was a woman writing to women. Our sisters should encourage true meekness. They should not be formed and talkative. And too bold. It's a woman writing to women. Talk at his sisters. <laughs> too bold. But they should be modest and unassuming and slow to speak. They may cherish courteousness. If they occupy this position, they will not be burdened with undue attention from gentlemen in the church and out there in our workplaces. Two talkative sisters. 
too bold. If you slowed down, say it's another woman called Ellen White, you could not be burdened with undue attention. <coughs> From gentlemen in the church, in the outside of the church. He that had ears to hear. <laughs> Let them what? Hear. Yeah. Are you talkative? Too bold? Adventist home page 33, Sister White writes, a woman who will allow an unchaste word or an unchaste hint to be uttered in her presence is not as God would have her. A man comes talking about bedroom life at your workplace and our Adventist sister is there and she's laughing and he's enjoying what the man is saying. God is watching you. You are not an ambassador of God. I like what the sister says. One more word from you, brother. Police. <laughs> but many of our sisters will laugh and enjoy what is going on because they are of a similar character to the speaker. Opposites will repair. But why are they repairing? They are made of the same material, same moral fiber. As Christ ambassadors, I entreat you who, who profess present truth to promptly resent any approach to impurity and forsake the society of those who breathe an impure suggestion. Don't befriend them. Forsake them. The brother who regarded Joseph when Mrs. Potiphar desired, he departed. She remained holding what? Remain with the jacket, but I'm not there. But this day they don't remain with the jacket, they remain with the man. <laughs> Be very careful. Pharaoh said, who is going? Satan is saying, a saint who is going there. I have long been desiring to speak to you, my sisters, says Ellen White. And in this one, three, three, two. And tell them that from what the Lord has been pleased to show me from time to time, there is a great fault among our sisters. They are not careful to abstain from all what appears of evil. They are not all circumspect in deportment as becometh women professing godliness. Their words are not select and well chosen, as those of women who have received the grace of God is, should be. They are too familiar with their brethren. They linger around them and incline towards them. And they seem to choose their society. They are highly gratified with their brethren's attention. I don't have time to read, says a woman who is always in the company of men ought to be feared. And a man who enjoys the society of women, always among women, always among he ought to be feared. Many men should be reserved. They should not give a hint to young ladies that a young lady may say, I think he has been a tongue around me. No hints. I didn't use any man, any, the name of any elder, I said, in a tongue. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you with me? Because the devil can employ you as a deceiver in church and a deceiver at work. Brother, when you relate to the opposite sex, no hint to, lex, to make somebody think otherwise. Jesus interacted with the opposite sex, even with prostitutes, Mary Magdalene, but there was no hint. The result was they were saved. May you have the saving influence, brother, and as you go into your workplace, be as the salt of the earth. When a woman Helen White says at this home, 338, when a woman relates her family problems and the complaints of her husband to another man, she violates her marriage vows. <laughs> Mrs. Nyatanga starts talking, talking to a certain man or certain elder about the weaknesses of Mr. Nyatanga. How he is not doing this and how he is not doing that. Oh, sometimes I feel, what, why are you talking? <laughs> 
You are becoming an open door. Whosoever will, you may enter. Whosoever will, the doors are open. A woman who complains of her husband or a man who talks about his wife to another woman, criticizing them, you know, and I'm saying relating his marital problems, you know, in the sector you say, look, but why does your wife do that? You're such a man that's so handsome that you don't deserve such a <laughs> In fact, some people like appreciation, you know, so who appreciates? The door is open. It is forbidden to talk about your wife to another woman or to talk about your husband to another man at work. I haven't eaten for four days, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, my friend, I haven't eaten. Don't worry, here's uh, 200 grand, just buy something for yourself. Next time again, where do you go when you are not happy? Why have you said this morning, sweetie? Oh, well, my husband, oh. Another thousand. See what you can do for yourself. Somebody said the shortest way to a woman's heart is through food. <laughs> <laughs> to a woman's heart. Later, the second man said, No, no, no. In the Garden of Eden, the devil found a shortcut to eat through eating. <laughs> eating. Ladies, be careful of eating. The woman who fell in Eden, the temptation was what? Eating. <laughs> and the devil knows that. He will make things hard at home. And some gentleman will provi provide something to eat. And you eat. And you get used to eating at work. And then you eat you. <laughs> Men who are doing God's work with a Christ abiding in their hearts we will not lower the standard of morality but whoever seek to lift it up they will not find pleasure in the flattery of women or being petted by them you didn't hear that? holy men will not allow women to pet them what is petty? A holy man will not allow a woman who is not his wife to pet him. I wonder how many holy men do we have here. <laughs> they will not find pleasure in flattery of women being pet by them. Let men, both single and married, say, sister, hands off. <laughs> when they say, just a half pastor, hands off. Don't think I'm a stone age man. No, don't think I'm uncivilized. I fear God. Brother, hands off. Holy men say, hands off. I will never give the least occasion that my good name should be evil spoken of. My good name is more capital, of more value to me than gold and silver. Let me preserve it untarnished. If men assail that name, it shall not be because of me that I have given occasion for Christ to be blasphemed. But for the same reason that they spoke evil of Christ, if any man is accused, let it be false accusation. No way to pack, when to pack. Are you with me? And they don't let the weaker in mind think that you are doing evil. Amen. Avoid the appearance of what? Evil. The temptations in the workplace. Brethren, our seminar for tonight is about to end. If any person needs to have a reformation in the way they've been behaving themselves at work and relating to members of the opposite sex, consider these words and ask God to give you a new beginning. It says, every woman, every man who fears God, there's a quotation that says, must be encircled by a holy influence. It says, careless persons, Thieves and thugs 
in prostitutes. When they came near Jesus, they suddenly became sober. Holiness radiated around him. But if a thug, an immoral person comes into my presence, they will go on to speak carelessly. Why are they not sensing the presence of God in my life? Some people have been given nicknames. Strict ladies who fear God, they've been nicknamed their sister wife. Some young men who refuse to touch their girlfriends, when they attempt it, the, the girlfriend says, oh, I'm going out with the priest, you know. Every time, let's pray. Every time, Sister White says, he never touches me. Be careful, Satan is now operating full time. He may tempt you through a girlfriend or a boyfriend to bring you down. Who is like Joseph among the young? Who flee and say, how can I sin against God? Such will see the kingdom of heaven. 